and welcome to this quick little video on SAS. This is the video on how to get data into SAS so that you can analyze it. You must have the data into SAS before you can analyze it. There's lots of different types of data. We're going to look at three types of data that we can get into SAS. One is when you have a small data set, you can hard code the data into the SAS code. Um, two, you can import the data from your computer from a CSV file or some other data file. And three, we're going to import from the internet. So let's go ahead and start SAS. 9.4 English. Make this nice and big. Blank editor down there. So let's begin. Option one is going to be hard code the data into SAS. And this is an option that you would use if perhaps you had a small data set um, or you wanted to share this script across between you and your collaborators. So here's, the, here's how it starts. All, always, when you load data into SAS, you start with the data statement. It's going to be a data. It doesn't have to be capital D-A-T-A, but I like to capitalize my SAS commands. And then the name of the data set. And we're going to call this tree data for obvious reasons. The next line is your input line. It starts with the keyword input, and then it's followed by every variable that you're going to input. Block is one variable. TRT, MNT for treatment is the second, and growth is the third. This dollar sign follows treatment because treatment is going to be a character variable. It's not going to be numerical. It's going to be, in this case, an A, B, or C, although any string that you would use. And at the very end, we've got two at signs. What that means is it tells SAS to keep reading in, in uh, block treatment growth, block treatment growth, block treatment growth, block treatment growth, block treatment growth until the end of the line. Without that, it's just going to read the first block treatment growth, then go to the next line of block treatment growth. The double ats at the end, it says just keep reading till the end of the line. Now, we don't just have to import the data. We can actually create data as we work within what, and this is called a data step. It's where we take care of all of our data. So I'm going to define the variable year. It's going to be 1997. So for every single record, the year is going to be 1997. It's a pretty good year. There have been better. There have been worse. I can also create a variable, and I'm going to call it LG growth. And it's going to be the log of the growth value. And growth is in the data set. So in the data step, you can create a new variable all by itself. Or you can create a new variable that's based on a variable in the data set. Okay, once you've got that taken care of, you go to the data lines command. And that says, okay, this is going to be the start of the data that we're reading in. Um, these are going to be lines of the data. Uh, alternatively, instead of data lines, you could use the command cards, C-A-R-D-S, as a throwback to when the data actually was stored on little punch cards. Um, but we're going to use data lines here and I just typed in the data. Block, treatment, growth, block, treatment, growth, block, treatment, growth. So this is one record. Block 1, treatment C, the growth level is 6.79. This is another record. Block 4, treatment C, with a growth of 6.43. Notice there are no semicolons here, but there is one at the end of all the data. Semicolons are very important for SAS. Every line has to have a semicolon on it, unless it's a very special line. And then we're going to end this with run. So I'm going to highlight all of this, and I'm going to run it, or I guess submit. Uh, again, SAS was originally a server language, so and you'd be working on your little dummy terminal at your computer. So it always talks about in terms of cards, and submitting to your server, and it gives you server times, etc. Now I can either click on this little running person up here, which is submit, or I can hit F3 on my ca uh, my keyboard. I'm going to use F3. Boom. Here's the log of everything that just went down. Line one, two, three, four, five, six. All the data is in lines is associated with a data line statement of six. And 
then 10 is the end of it, then we ran it. I don't see any red here. Red would indicate that there's some error. So everything looks like it worked well. Or did it? It's kind of hard to tell because I really would like to see the data as SAS sees it. And so to do that, in order to print out the data, I'm going to run our first proc. It's called proc print. Proc uh, cancel. Okay, I'm back. But I'm not sure what's going on with the keyboard. Okay, proc is short for process, but it's just proc and print. And again, you don't have to make these uppercase. I tend to do all my procs in uppercase. Now, proc print says you want to print something out. What do you want to print out? You want to print out your data. And what data do we have? It's tree data. So data equals tree data. And again, end it with a semicolon. Run and then F3, and then here's the results viewer. And this is our data. Block, treatment, growth, year, which is something we created that wasn't a, originally a part of this data set, and log of growth, which again, we calculate based on the growth. So this 1.88858 is just the natural log of 6.61. Notice that up here, in the results side, we've got our results. Data set, we can click on that and we get back to our data. So that's method one. It's to hard code the data into SAS. And there's some advantages to that. And the main advantage is if you look, I can email this to you and you've got this exact same data as I have. Now, option two is you're going to import the data from a local file. So let's go ahead and do that option. I'm going to minimize this window. I'm going to go into my H drive. My H drive actually has stat 5013. There's the data set I want to use, Fisher 38. It's a CSV file. How do I know it's a CSV file? Microsoft Excel comma separated values file. And if I just want to look at the data, I can double click it and again, I'm here on my desktop. That's going to open up into whatever program I have that defaults to opening up CSV files. And in this case, it just happens to be Excel. It consists of two variables. Variable one is the sample number, and it's one through four in Roman numerals. And variable two is colonies. Notice again, variables are the head, uh, are columns, records are rows. Okay, so we got sample and colonies as our two variables. Let's get back into SAS. There we go. So now I want to import that data set. So here's how we can do it. There we go. Again, we start the data step with the keyword data specify the name of our data set. In this case, it's BACT data, which is short for bacteria data. Now, the first new part here is the in-file statement. In-file means you're bringing in to SAS memory the file that follows. And again, it, it's in quotation marks. And it's a, it's a, uh, and because I'm working on this on the, on the server, this has to be an absolute path, which means it starts with the H colon because it's on my H drive and it ends up with the name of the data set. It's fisher38.csv. I have to specify the delimiter is a comma and that the first observation that I want is in row 2 because in this data set row 1 was the data s uh, that uh, was the variable names. So we're skipping over that and going straight to row 2. Second is the input Notice we had an input back here on the when we hard coded the data. Input was followed by the variable names in order. We're going to do the same thing here. Sample and colonies. 
Sample, remember, was 1 through 4 in Roman numerals, so it's got to be followed by a dollar sign. We really don't have to call it sample and colonies, but that's what the data set has it. We might as well. Follow it with a run, and just to double check everything's working correctly, that we got everything in, uh, we followed up with a proc print. Now again, as before, we could create a new variable here. Uh, we could call it year is equal to 1938, which I believe was when this data was done. And we could do log colony, log call is equal to log of colonies. Remembering to end each line with a semicolon. Go ahead and run all this. F3, here's the data. Sample, colonies, year, LN call. So this is 4.06044 is the natural log of 58. Now notice something in SAS. It prints out in a sans serif font, which means it's very difficult to tell what is a, a lowercase l and an uppercase i. So keep that in mind at times. This could be a lowercase l or this could be an uppercase i. We we do know it's an uppercase i. So keep that in mind when you're using variable names. So that was option two, importing it from a local file. Option three is importing the data from the internet itself. And this is a popular option. You're able to store your data on the internet and have everybody in the group work with that data. This requires a little bit more, one, one more line requires the file name statement. The file name statement will save the URL that you specify to the right and store it in the variable data location. So at the end of running this line, the variable data location will have this string, this URL in it. Notice it's a URL, a full URL. It starts with HTTP colon, backslash, backslash, and then the rest of the uh, address. So this line must be run before you can infile this data. Then we start with the data step. Call this data stat data. Don't know why, but we'll call it stat data for fun. Followed by the infile statement in file, data location, that and that have to be exactly the same. Then again the delimiter and the first observation. In this in this file the first line uh, belongs to the variable names. So first obs will be equal to two. We're going to skip that first line and just import the data itself. Then again as with the last, remember the last it started with data then in file then input it's data, then in file, then input. Name of the variables. Gender, we see, is a character variable. It's going to be M's and F's, or males and females. College is also a character variable. It's going to be CAS, BUS, etc. And those are dollar signs that indicate, indicate character variable. It's a very strong way of specifying that you're working with categorical variables. And again, we can actually create a new variable, GPA percent will just be the GPA divided by 4. We can do just about anything we want. Same as, same as always. All the fiddling with the data takes place within the data step. And then we run it all. If you notice, we had some errors there. So let's go ahead and scroll up on the log and see what those errors were. Let's see if we can interpret what SAS is telling us. This is a good place to actually show you how SAS gives us error codes, or in this case, doesn't, and you have to kind of guess what it means. Error invalid logical name, error in the file name statement. So I know something's wrong with line 24. File name, data location, URL, HTTP, everything looks pretty good. Error in the file name statement. Hmm, whatever should we do? And at this point, you realize that SAS really doesn't give you good hints on what's wrong with your, your code, which is unfortunate. So what I do is I always hop on to Google and Google something like, in this case, SAS file name statement. 
and then I'll find out, oh, this data location really can't be just any old vi uh, variable name. It has to be a very specific variable name. That variable name has to be data file. So instead of data location, it's got to be data file. And the only reason I know that is because I went to Google and Googled SAS file name statement. So do that right now. Go to, go to Google and f search for SAS file name statement and read up on it. You'll see that there's a lot of help files out there, both within SAS and at other places. Very, very useful. So we fixed it, changed it from data location to data file, changed it here and on the in file statement. Let's go ahead and run it. And here's our data set. ID, grade, gender, was males and females, GPA, SAT math, age, college, and GPA PCT, which is percent, GPA divided by four. Pretty basic right there. So here's what we did in this. And let's go ahead and just finish it off with a nice little quit, just to give us a feeling of satisfaction. So we did three things in this little video. Thing number one was we showed how to import, uh, how to get the data into SAS by hard coding it. And this is where we did that. This always started with data, and then input, and the input told us what the variables were. And when we hard code the data in, we did it after the data line statement. Option two was to import the data from a local file. We started with the data, then in file, and here's where we specified the local file. It is the absolute path, and I have to use the absolute path because I'm using this shared desktop. And then followed by the input. Again, note that the dollar sign means that the preceding variable is a, is a character variable. And then the third way is to import it from the internet. The new line there is the file name statement. You must start with file name, the word data file, the word URL, and then the actual URL in quotation marks. And then the data step, the in file, the input, etc. So three ways of getting data into SAS, and you really do need to have data into SAS before you can actually do anything with the data. I hope this was, oh, and one last thing we did was discover that SAS error commands or error codes are not always that helpful. And so that means that we have to go to Google and do some searching to find out what we did wrong. It's always a good thing is to learn how to figure out what we did wrong. And Google is a great source for that. So I hope this was very helpful. Take care of yourself. I'll see you.